we're going to be discussing interpersonal relationships. Um, hopefully you start brainstorming what this potentially, potentially might mean to you. Um, and, and what kind of comes in mind? Um, it's uh, For today, we're gonna try to go ahead and kind of like debunk uh, certain things that we kind of already are like predisposed to thinking when it comes to relationships. Okay, so who am I? Um, my name is Jasmine Rojas. I am a fourth year psychological sciences and biological sciences major at UCI. Um, my pronouns are she, they, and um, I'm just here as a resource to, to make sure I'm able to provide all kinds of information um, through my perspective as a college student and, and see how we can like turn these college things into like real life, um, into any academic or like professional endeavors uh, we might find ourselves in. So a quick disclaimer before we officially get started, um, the information presented here is not therapy, um, but we're here as a resource to make sure you get the help you might need. Um, and if you, throughout the, the presentation, if you do see any information that might resonate with you or, or you want some clarifications, um, feel free to connect with us and we'll be able to provide further assistance. Um, at the end of the presentation, uh, there will also be some additional resources that you um, can go ahead and make of your own use. Um, it'll have like names, also numbers and addresses. So community agreements. Once we get started, um, I just wanna make it clear that this is your safe space. Um, in this safe space, we're kind to everyone. Uh, we're also as present as possible. Uh, if you were present in our last week's presentation on communication and conflict resolution, uh, being present means actively listening, uh, listening to understand rather than listening to reply. Um, we also take space and also make space. Um, so in any time that you might speak up, uh, make sure you also have the same respect for someone who might also take the same amount of space you once did. And lastly, the Vegas rule. So what is said here stays here and what is learned here leaves here. Um, so the important rule here is to, you know, be vulnerable, uh, be as honest as possible as, as much as you're willing and able to do so. And also, if you learn any valuable takeaways, um, go ahead and spread that information out. But as far as uh, any personal information, let's go ahead and, and just keep it here. So a couple objectives for today. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, define what interpersonal relationships are. Uh, also define a relationship within yourself. So also you can't maintain particular relationships if you don't have a relationship with your own self, as well as defining toxic relationships. Um, if when there's good, there's also bad. And so we'll be able to, to define what those things might look like. And lastly, building and maintaining relationships. So a quick icebreaker, uh, can you name examples of your favorite duo? Um, so for example, for me, uh, SpongeBob and Squidward. Um, they're a very interesting pair. You know, you have a very uplifting uh, person, SpongeBob, you know, he's very like, I'm ready, let's get, let's get it to it. And then you have uh, Squidward, he's a very chill dude, you know, he's minding his business. So interpersonal relationships. Uh, according to um, a formal definition, interpersonal relationships are social associations, connections, or affiliations between two or more people. Um, and so what does that mean to you? Uh, as well as um, last week with communication and conflict resolution, um, there's a relationship between, folk, but between two individuals or more. And so there's often a lot of back and forth going on. Um, sometimes relationships are formed because of some kind of connection, as mentioned in the definition. Something is keeping y'all together. And so that something can be either really good, if it's family, uh, if it's school, uh, if it's work. Um, and so anything that happens between those two things um, can either be really good or really bad. So as mentioned, uh, there's a bunch of different types of interpersonal relationships. Um, it's not always romantic as the word relationship often conveys, right? We, you hear relationships and you think, oh, you know, it's a, it's a romantic relationship between two individuals. But you can see relationships between friendships, uh, between families, between fam uh, professionals, such as like your boss or your coworkers, and also uh, romantic. So um, lots of lots of things going on there. And so you don't communicate the same way uh, with your boss as you do with your mom, right? Or, or your sibling. And, and you don't communicate um, with your professional boss uh, in, in a friendship, you know, in some uh, friendships, the, there's a lot of uh, inter like uh, inside jokes that you might not uh, want to communicate that to that to your uh, professional relationships, right? You don't necessarily type LOL at the end of an email. So there, you see that kind of different communication going on uh, between the relationship that you have with a particular individual. Um, so why are they important? Um, majority of relationships have the ability to improve your mood. 
Um, let's just say you're having a bad day. You want to hang out with a friend. Um, that friend has really good energy and all of a sudden things are fine. Um, they also help you reach your goals. Uh, so like you being here, the relationship you might have with One Future Coachella Valley, um, for me personally, the relationship I have with them has brought me a series of opportunities um, that are only helping me go forward, right? And so now my relationship with them is, is making myself a resource uh, to provide that kind of help uh, that I once received to everyone else, as well as social support. Uh, like I just explained with One Future Coachella Valley, I receive a lot of support and also with my family. Uh, by making them proud, you know, the only thing I can go from there is, is up. And if, if I'm making them proud, majority of folks tend to support folks who do good, right? And also they boost self-worth. Uh, networking is very important. Um, in times of need, knowing you have some kind of support system, uh, you have your really good relationships with folks, you'll be able to depend on others and, and things will appear to be fine just because of those important relationships you might have. So what is a relationship with oneself? Uh, good interpersonal relationships start here with yourself. So what does that mean? It's, it's being intentional and developing really good relationships of, of just creating healthy mechanisms overall, right? And so it depends with communication, it starts with being kind, and it starts with being empathetic. How do you maintain a really good relationship um, with yourself? It's, it's, it's as short as uh, creating short goals, middle goals, and long-term goals. So for me personally, um, I'm anticipating watching a movie tonight. That's something that's totally feasible for me to do at the end of the day. And also for the middle, um, maybe something I might want to do on Thursday. And long term, I, I really hope to establish a really good career um, that'll help me, you know, with any of the things I want to achieve later in the future. Um, and it's really good to be kind to yourself by um, having small incremented goals rather than just having one big goal that you just end up overwhelming doesn't happen. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're kind of self-deprecating, kind of saying, oh, I didn't do this. So this and that, right? It's not being kind to yourself. It's about being honest and, and speaking kindly to yourself. Um, we have words of affirmation saying, you know, I am good at this. I am good at that. Even though I did not succeed at this, I do really good at this. And so it's about, you know, giving yourself a pat on the back and also just, you know, understanding that you're doing the best that you can. And also one thing that really helps with that is seeking others who fit your goals. Um, surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals who are very ambitious and do nothing but support your future goals um, can really help just maintaining that goal of, of, you know, being kind to yourself and having a really good relationship with yourself and your own values. So I'd like to, to end that uh, part of the section with a quote by Audre Lorde, caring for myself is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation. And so that's something that really speaks um, you might really want these pair of tennis shoes. And so if these pairs of tennis shoes are kind of like a form of self-indulgence, think about it, you are walking comfortably. Um, if any of my female identifying folks have ever walked in really uncomfortable heels, it is not good. And sometimes it's worth splurging that little extra $50 to get you know really good quality shoes because you know you're gonna be feeling yourself and you won't be thinking about you know the pain in the back of your ankles. Um, same with my male identifying folks. It's really important to, to you know, you want to go with like a nice fitted suit, makes you look presentable if you feel good. Uh, if you look good, you feel good. And so that's one thing. Um, Self-preservation is key when it comes to uh, maintaining a really good relationship with yourself. So it forms resilience. As I like to say, last night I took an L, but today, you know, we're coming up. Last night was yesterday, you know, today is a new day. And so uh, it also reduces stress. You're no longer stressed. You know what you're capable of doing. And so that lowers your cortisol level. Uh, if you don't know what cortisol is, cortisol is a stress hormone in your body. When that skyrockets, um, that's what causes you uh, to feel tense. That's what causes you to move your knee up and down. Um, if you feel anxiety, uh, that's cortisol doing its job. Um, and so the best thing you can do is just, you know, pause, take a deep breath and say, you know, I'm doing the best that I can. And also um, productivity. You know what you're capable of, right? If today's a good day, you work hard, you play hard. You know, we heard that in the summer with Khalifa. Um, so, you know, being kind to yourself, knowing what you're capable of, setting a particular goal, a short achieving goal um, will help your, your um, productivity over in the long grand scheme of things. And also health symptoms. An apple a day keeps the doctor away, right? So if you're doing all these things correctly, um, obviously it's a process, doesn't happen overnight. But slowly but surely, once your resilience go up, uh, you'll be able to do all these things, feel a lot less stress, and do a lot more. 
And lastly, toxic relationships, what are they? And what specific things might make them toxic? So uh, as any other relationship, a toxic relationship is between two individuals who don't support each other. Uh, there might be often conflict. Um, sometimes one might undermine the other. There might be competition. And the most important thing is the presence of disrespect. Uh, disrespect is, is very critical when it comes to two individuals. You always want to respect each other's boundaries and each other as you know, unique individuals who have our own experiences and own values. Um, isolation, obsession, intensity, anger, those are a few of the many things that can be toxic behaviors, right? You don't uh, have, if you've ever heard of guilt tripping, um, that's something that is, is pretty common. Oh, you hung out with X, Y, and Z, so why can't you hang out with me? And now you kind of feel bad, right? And so that doesn't necessarily just happen between friends. It can also happen between romantic relationships. It can even happen within your family. Um, and so once you identify those things, you, you might want to self-reflect and kind of contemplate what's going on. And if you need further information, you know, you can always refer to our communication and conflict resolution um, presentation that's uploaded on YouTube. And, and you'll be able to work these things just because, you know, toxic behaviors as individuals, we're able to grow. Uh, we're not static. We're very fluid. And, uh, you know, we're able to gain these things. So even if these things might be behaviors you might practice, um, the key is to, to first identify them and figure out how to change them. And so how do we cultivate these relationships? Considering our circumstances, um, we can do a lot. We can be authentic, uh, we can be vulnerable, and we can be empathetic. Um, and so by being vulnerable and empathetic, you understand that certain things are going on, right? So let's just say um, my best friend, for example, we, we FaceTime a lot because, you know, with our current circumstance of COVID, um, but even with vaccines, she's still not comfortable with those boundaries. And so as a person who really respects her as an individual, I completely understand those things and I'm very empathetic as to how our circumstance can cause our anxiety, right? And so I'll be authentic. I often tell her like, hey, I miss hanging out, but that's not necessarily affecting our relationship compared to if I was just, you know, you should hang out with me. I haven't seen you. Like, you know, guilt tripping, that's, that's very toxic. Um, and so by maintaining those authentic relationships, you can do quite a lot. And that's through quality time acts of service, receiving gifts, physical touch, and words of affirmation. If you've heard those, those are love languages. Um, for me, I am a very physical touch person. So you can imagine I might be suffering with the pandemic right now. You know, I always, oh, hi, like I'm a very huggy person. Um, whereas my mom is an acts of service individual. So for me, it is easy to go fill up the gas tank for her and she'll be like, I know my, my child loves me, right? So it's things of that nature. So you're able to actually figure your, out your love language. Um, if you just like Google it, you'll be able to take like a quick, a quick five minute test um, and it'll rank your, your, your um, love languages. And most importantly, it's important to love people in their love language, um, not loving them in my own love language. Because if someone is not a physical touch person the same way that I am, it might come off in the wrong way, right? Um, so it's about being very conscious, authentic and empathetic. Um, but some additional resources that might be um, helpful to you um, if you do find the need to seek any further help, we have Clinicas de Salud del Pueblo. Um, they're open, oh, they're both uh, in person and on Zoom. Um, they're available Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. through 6 p.m. Um, there's their information, as well as the Jewish Family Service of the Desert. Um, they're also in person and, and do telehealth services, uh, but they're also open Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. through 5 p.m. and on Fridays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And lastly, the Indio uh, mental health clinic. They're also just over Zoom, I believe, uh, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and also Friday, 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, and also, uh, you can also visit Instagram. Uh, I'll keep this handle right here for additional resources. They actually have a whole compilation of uh, uh, mental health resources located um, for everyone, for specific for um, students, and also for low-cost information um, services. So feel free to check them out. Uh, but also, I'll be rotating a specific additional resources for the upcoming presentations. Thank you so much.